What is going on YouTube? It's your boy Spanko and today I'm showing off the most toxic Yu-Gi-Oh deck in today's format. It takes advantage of cards like Inspector Border, Fossil Dyna, and the pretty recently released Time Tearing Morganite. That card is absolutely insane and this deck is so toxic in today's format. Now if you guys enjoy these videos, make sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel for more Yu-Gi-Oh content just like this one. We upload five days a week here on the channel, deck profiles, combo videos, dual replays, all that good stuff. Plus you guys are going to get five shorts a week. So you guys get a little bit of everything. Make sure to stay tuned in and subscribe for all of that. But I don't really want to keep you guys waiting for so long because I'm ready to get toxic. So with that being said, let's get right into the deck profile. All right, so to get things started with literally the most toxic deck you guys will ever see, I'm entering my villain arc with this one, and that is Inspector Border, the very first card that you're going to want to play. And then that's not all because we're following it up with three Fossil Dyna. This, this, this is not okay. Now, these cards are absolutely insane because both these cards have crazy effects that lock your opponent out of doing things. So Inspector Border, while it doesn't lock your opponent from summoning any monsters, it has an effect where essentially they can't activate any effects. And then Fossil Dyna has that effect where while this card is face up, neither player can special summon monsters. And it has a really nifty effect as well, where if it's flip, essentially all special summon monsters on the field are destroyed. And it's really good because you can play defensively with this card, but then you can also just start your turn by normal summoning this, which is insane. Now you guys might be wondering, but Spanko, these are some small weak attack monsters that if my opponent can special something bigger than 2000, then they'll just get over this. You're playing a lot of protection. Now, if you guys thought that this was all, it's not because the next card we're playing are three Vanities Fiends. This needs to stop now vanity's fiends has the same effect essentially as fossil dyna neither player can special summon monsters while this card is face up and it's absolutely insane so these are the monsters that you're going to want to get to now you guys also might be wondering spanko you're playing nine normal summons plus this one's a tribute summon there's a card in this deck that puts this all together and i promise you it's so toxic and this is one of the most toxic lineups that you guys can be playing because most of your end boards are going to be ending on both a fossil dyna and a border or you can end on cards like Vanity Fiends plus one of these two, and it's absolutely insane. So another card that we're playing that's absolutely broken is just such a powerful card in today's format is three Kosh Sora Fenrir. Now Fenrir, there's actually multiple reasons for playing this. So Fenrir on its own is just kind of a disruption, which is really nice. So you guys can be playing this, summon it on your turn, even if you don't have any one of these normal summons, it in itself is a disruption. But the really cool thing with Fenrir is once you special summon it, you can now use it as tribute fodder for your Vanity Fiend. And in a lot of game states, that's actually better than just having a Fenrir on the board and going second of course Fenrir is very powerful this deck obviously wants to go first however if you're forced to go second Fenrir is another one of those cards that's absolutely insane going second as well and then for another card that's good going first and going second it's three dimension shifter shifter again one of the most to look guys just look at this these are just all toxic cards in today's game and I wasn't lying when I said this is the most toxic deck you guys will see so shifter of course going first you can start your turn by using dimension shifter and it's absolutely insane when you do and then going second of course dimension shifter is also very powerful because essentially when your opponent starts their turn off you can activate the shifter and this against a lot of decks are really really powerful so the really cool thing about this deck is while it wants to go first it can still go second and still be able to complete so that's it that's all the cards here that we're playing for our monsters Next up for our spells, we are playing three of the Time Thief Morganite. Now, this is the card that ties this deck together. And I'm going to spend a little bit of time on this card before we go any further, because this is one of the most broken cards in the deck. So it says for the rest of the duel, apply the following effects. You cannot activate monster effects in the hand, which is why the only hand trap we're playing is Shifter, because essentially you're only going to ever be activating Shifter before activating this anyways, because you'll have no cards in your graveyard. Other than that, we're not playing any hand traps because of Morganite, right? Right? So the effects are you draw two cards instead of one for your normal draw during your draw phase. And that's insane. That means you get to draw two every single draw phase. And then the other effect is you can conduct two normal summons slash sets per turn, not just one. Now, this is absolutely insane because essentially what this card does is it lets you summon two of the toxic monsters that you guys are playing. So you guys can summon border plus Dyna if you open both of them. If you open Dyna, you can summon Dyna plus Vanity's Fiend. So this way, at least you're ending on a Vanity's Fiend, which is a little bit bigger than the Dyna, right? So there's so many different things you guys can do. And Time Tearing Morganite is essentially one of the most broken cards. And it's the reason why this deck can be played. Now, another thing that the card does, which is pretty cool, is you can banish a card from your graveyard. You can discard another one. And then your opponent cannot activate monster effects when you normal summon this turn. That's kind of cool. It's not horrible. It's something that doesn't come up too often. But its first two effects are the main two effects that you're going to be using. And it ties this 
entire deck together and then for the rest of the deck we're just playing a lot of consistency for the spells so we're playing three pot of prosperity as well as two extravagance now you guys might be wondering spanko why are you playing so many draw cards it's it's because you really need to get to this card and you really need to get to your normal summons as fast as possible and to do that these are the best cards to play five is the best ratio and i know they don't synergize with each other but you really want to be playing five because you need to see these and these are the most important cards to see and so is your time tearing so for that reason you need to play five because no matter what as soon as you get to this and two monsters you're pretty much winning the game so that's why these five are really important and it makes a lot of sense to be playing five and then lastly we're playing two ultimate slayer this card is really good for when you're forced to go second or when you lose a die roll essentially because you don't really need your extra deck at all you're really playing based off of your main deck this card is really good because you can use a lot of the cards in your extra deck as fodder for it and then on top of that it gets rid of multiple cards because this in itself gets rid of cards but if you send cards like entis from your extra deck then essentially like you just do more things with that entis right so ultimate slayer absolutely insane and that's it for the spell cards that's all the spell cards are going to be playing Moving on to the traps here, we are playing a good amount of traps because this deck is a deck that wants to go first and set up some pretty unbreakable toxic boards. And I keep saying toxic, but trust me, that's because it is. But the first card we're playing is three Imperm. Now, because this deck can't really play hand traps, Imperm just makes a lot of sense because it's a literal hand trap. And the best part about Imperm is the fact that it can play under Morganite, which is really, really insane. Then we're playing three, there can be only one. This is the most broken floodgate in the game right now, especially paired off with this deck because your border is a machine, your fossil dyna is a rock, your vanity fiend is a fiend, your Koshtara Fenrir is a psychic so it's so broken because all of these monsters you can summon under there can be only one which is absolutely insane and against a lot of decks they can actually play through this card so it's absolutely insane especially if you're flipping this plus like a border or plus like a fossil dino or something like that it could be absolutely insane another really powerful card is three crackdown I actually really like the crackdown because one it's monster negation which is really good into a lot of decks but two it takes the monster your opponent controls and the reason that's really good is essentially when you control that monster you can now use it as tribute fodder for for your vanities fiend which is really really powerful so that's why i like three crackdown i think crackdown makes a lot of sense in this deck then we're playing three solemn strike solemn strike is of course really powerful as well going first and going second and the really cool thing about this deck is crackdown there can be only one solemn strike and imperm all of these traps are good going first and they're good going second because these can help you break boards and then these can also help you when you establish your turn one board so that's why they're really powerful and then lastly we're playing three punishment punishment is absolutely insane as well now punishment doesn't synergize very well with shifter but keep in mind that shifter is not always going to be live so that's why i like playing the punishment and punishment being able to send entis being able to send a synchro monster or an Ixies monster that i'm going to be showing you guys later it becomes really really powerful so that's why i like three punishment and that's it for the traps you guys can see all of these traps are really good going first dogmatic punishment especially is really good going first but all of these ones up here are also really good going second Moving on to the extra deck over here, I'll be pretty quick with it. We're playing two Starving Venom Fusion Dragon. I only have one, sorry guys, I have to proxy the second one. But we're playing two because this is a deck that plays Prosperity as well as Extrav. We're also playing two Mud Dragon. Keep in mind that we can play Super Poly in the side deck, which I'll show you guys the side deck in a little bit. And these are all really good Super Poly targets. Another good Super Poly target is Garura. Garura is also a good Punishment target, which is really nice, and a good Ultimate Slayer target. So that's why I like playing the Garura, the Mud Dragon, and the Starving Venom. Good for all multiple reasons. And then we're playing three Entis as well as the one fossil warrior these are the best cards to send off of your punishment these are the best cards to send off of your ultimate slayer as well if you're using it for a fusion so that's why we're playing all of these cards because these are good super poly targets good punishment targets good ultimate slayer target which is really nice and then other cards that are good for ultimate slayer and for punishment are wind pegasus attic nister really good graveyard effect we have omega which is really nice for our Ixies card we're playing Muriel logic aggregator this card is really powerful as well and then for our link monsters we're playing basophilus as well as your fair g now you can technically play the evil twin one but i don't like playing the evil twin link four and the reason for that is because you have to play a brick in the main deck which i don't want to do fair g is really nice because if your shifter is dead for example you can draw a card put back the dead shifter that's in your hand so that's why i really like the fair g but again keep in mind all of these cards are really good for punishment really good for slayer and it makes it so good because with your side deck as well it's really good with super poly Lastly, I'm going to show you guys a side deck, but keep in mind the side deck is always going to be built based off of personal preference, and it's also going to be based off of locals. So if your locals plays a lot of back row, you want to play a lot of back row hate. If your locals plays a lot of combo, you want to play a lot of combo hate. Koshtara, a lot of Koshtara hate, etc, etc. But this side deck, I think, is really good into a lot of different things in the meta, which is really nice. So we're starting off with one Harpy's Feather Duster, as well as two Lightning Storm. These are for your back row removal cards. These are cards that are really, really powerful into a lot of decks. Lightning Storm is also really good into front row, which is really nice. If a lot of Sword Soul players, for some reason, summon an attack, so... 
playing storm base out of negate always which is really really powerful and then we're playing three super poly i think super poly pretty much breaks a lot of different meta boards in today's format and because you guys can fit so many super poly targets super poly makes a lot of sense if you're starting your turn off by activating super poly to break a lot of boards because keep in mind this deck does struggle the most going second so if you're able to use this break the board then make your own monster then be able to use cards like time tearing and then go into fossil dyna and border etc etc that's where you can start to win a lot of games so three super poly i think is really powerful and then lastly for going second we're playing three evenly match this is also really good against back row but it's also just really good against everything so all of these cards are really good for going second because while the main deck does have some things that are really good for going second cards like imperm cards like shifter cards like fenrir those are still really good in the main deck for going second however the deck still does struggle with breaking boards going second so for that reason these cards are all really powerful and then when you are going first let's say you're going first into game two or game three anti-spell i think is one of the most broken cards in the game right now it's good against striker good against sprite good against kashtura it's good against so many different things so that's why i like the three anti-spell and you're not playing that many spells in your main deck outside of your time tearing but keep in mind that you're going to be using that first and you're going to be trying to use that while you're going first on your first turn before you're even able to flip anti-spell up and then lastly we're playing three solemn judgment because our opponent is most likely going to side back row hate against us when we're choosing to go first into games two and games three and judgment is just really powerful as protection for you it's also good protection against cards like your border and your fossil dyna if your opponent has cards to get rid of it so judgment is really powerful for that so that's it there's the deck guys it's super super toxic this is the side deck over here again keep in mind it's always up to personal preference but this deck is so toxic man i'm gonna put these cards over here because i really want to show you guys oh my god fossil dyna fenrir the most toxic cards in the game and we're abusing them and we're playing the most toxic deck this game has right now in july 2023 so that is it for today's video i hope you guys did enjoy that was my take and my build for the most toxic deck of today's format this deck does so many things that your opponent just doesn't want to have to deal with and even if they try to deal with it it's pretty hard to deal with so many different floodgates like this deck can play and it's just so absolutely toxic now if you guys enjoyed this video make sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel for more Yu-Gi-Oh content just like this one we upload five days a week here on the channel but we do a full up to 10 videos a week because we get five shorts plus you guys get deck profiles combo videos dual replays all that good stuff right here on the channel so make sure you guys are subscribed to stay tuned into all of that thank you guys all for watching i appreciate every single one of you with that spanko signing out peace